afternoon, uh, everyone. Today, my topic is on updates, 2021 updates. And the updates are on, not only uh, confined to the international updates, but also on the Malaysian uh, practice. So this will be something uh, new in addition to the available literatures. If you want to know more about treatment uh, regime in epilepsy, you can see or search my YouTube uh, channel, which is on choosing the treatments that I have given in June 2020 uh, during the Epilepsy Made Easy online course. So this, these are the updates that I will cover today. The first two are on the treatment in status epilepticus, uh, different from our current regime in most uh, emergency that you are using. And the three, four, and five are on the old drugs, especially carbamazepine, sodium valproate, which is epilim, and finitoin. And the last one is on epilepsy. Is that your IYIP? So the first update is on intramuscular midazolam. And uh, as you probably uh, practice in most emergency, is the use of intravenous diazepam. And intravenous diazepam normally takes uh, a while to prepare the ampules and uh, prepare the IV line. And then only you can give the intravenous diazepam. And in some other countries, there were intravenous lorazepam uh, especially uh, those in US or UK, but it's not available in Malaysia. But the new updates on the treatment in the first line uh, therapy during status epilepticus is intramuscular midazolam, which can be given even in the pre-hospital uh, state. When the ambulance arrives and the patient still have seizure, uh, the uh, paramedics just have to withdraw the midazolam and give it intramuscularly. Uh, some uh, of the centers also have intranasal or buccal midazolam, which doesn't require an intravenous line. And this will make the administrations of the first dose faster than usual. As you can see in this RAMPAT uh, trial, what we can see here is that midazolam was even faster uh, with, uh, with a shorter intervals uh, as compared to the lorazepam, as we can uh, I've highlight in the box here. And because of the faster administrations, the efficacy between midazolam and lorazepam are equally good. And it can be uh, utilized for those without IV line or in the ambulance or in the pre-hospital state. So the second update is on second line. Most of us use uh, phenytoin as a second line during the status epilepticus treatment. However, there were a new comparative study between intravenous avitiracetam, which is Capra, IV valproate, which is epilim, and as well as false phenytoin. Uh, the reason why they use false phenytoin in this study is because Phosphenitoin can be given uh, as fast as 20 mg per kilo uh, at, a, at the dose of 20 mg per kg at 10 minutes durations. Whereas phenytoin, we can only be given uh, within 25 to 30 minutes slow infusions. And what we can see here is that the efficacy between uh, EPRA, epilim, and phosphenitoin are equally good in the overlapping of these uh, dose uh, on, the, on the charts with the area under the curve. There are two key uh, informations we learned from this study is the dose firstly, and you can see that the dose for Capra as well as the dose for Epilim is very high. Although in uh, Malaysia, we don't normally practice at such a high dose, but nowadays, the dose given for patients is higher than previously. For example, in Epilim, uh, some of us practice giving 20 mg per kg uh, bolus rather than 10 mg per kg bolus as we used in the past. The second key message as we learned from this uh, study is the time of administrations. And you can see that if the medication was given 
within uh, 10 minutes duration. And the faster the medication is given, we expect the higher or the better the efficacy. The third update is on HLA-B1502 screening. The first uh, paper published is in Taiwan, correlating the HLA-B1502 and the carbamazepine induced Steven Johnson or uh, severe cutaneous adverse drug reactions. And then subsequently, we replicate the uh, study in various Southeast Asian countries, especially in Malaysia on the left side. And you can see especially even including the Indians in Malaysia. And then we have helped uh, or collaborate with the Indonesia and Myanmar uh, to perform the association study. And in fact, HLA-B1502 are very prevalent uh, in Southeast Asia or even the South China. So what happened to University Malaya is that we have started to uh, implement HLA-B1502 screening in the year of 2013. And before the screening, before 2013, what we can see here is that out of the 968 patients who use carbamazepine, there were 21 of them developed Steven Johnson within the 968 patients. But after we have started screening, we have screened a total of uh, 193 in the past uh, seven years. And we have only one patient who has Steven Johnson. And that particular patient is, was tested negative for HLA-B1502. In fact, in our uh, previous studies, we found that 25% of the Steven Johnson related to carbamazepine are negative for HLA-B1502. And in fact, for those who are screened, which in which within uh, the 193 patients, 16% are uh, actually tested positive and they were not given carbamazepine. So this is consistent with the uh, prevalence rate in Malaysia among the Chinese and Malays. The fourth update is on sodium valproate. So in the in 2013, the Malaysian National Pharmaceutical Control Bureau has come out with a notice saying that in women with childbearing potential, including adolescents, young adults, and uh, adults or female with childbearing potential and having epilepsy, then we have to be aware that while given during pregnancy can uh, cause reduce IQ score in their children if they are exposed uh, to operate in the fetal phase. And because of this, in 2015, the EMPRA come out with this uh, a package insert recommending that we should avoid uh, sodium operate in female, including female children, adolescents, and women of childbearing potential, especially those who are pregnant. So this is the updates. We, what happened in the neurology uh, community, we think that the uh, package inserts cover too broad of a group and it has prevented the use of sodium valproate in many women who may benefit from the sodium valproate. Therefore, the, in 2020, uh, the expert opinion on the treatment approach of epilepsy, especially uh, Warpreet use in women with childbearing potential uh, has been published. You may find this uh, book or PDF file under the Malaysian Society of Neuroscience website uh, under the guidelines or under the resources. And this is one of the examples. For example, those who are pregnant while well controlled with epilepsy, with epilim, what can we do? And these are some of the advice given in that book. This helps for uh, those women, especially women who are who has uh, 
gain benefit from epilim. This helps to guide the physicians and doctors on whether to use and how to counsel them uh, on using sodium warfarin. So it doesn't mean that sodium warfarin are not or totally contraindicated in women, but it can still be used in certain dose and certain group of patients after proper counseling. The fifth uh, update is this daily dosing. As you can see in the chart that in the past, only phenytoin can be used on uh, daily dosing. Most other drugs like carbamazepine, lamotrigine, erythritol, topiramix, they are all BD dosing. Or sometimes uh, for carbamazepine, uh, we need TDS dosing. So there has been quite a while without any drugs on daily dosing until we have zonisamide. One of the reasons is because the half-life of zonisamide is very long, which is up to the 63 to 69 hours. So we can give uh, zonisamide on a daily uh, dosing. And then subsequently, after about six, seven years later, we have parent panel, which is also on daily dosing. And daily dosing has its own advantage, which I'll explain later on. Uh, and why we should consider uh, anti epileptic drugs on the daily uh, dosing regime. The last updates I would like to talk about is on epilepsy surgery. So epilepsy uh, treatments are not only pharmacological by using uh, various anti epileptic drugs. We can consider epilepsy surgery if we can identify the focal lesion in the brain that causing the seizure. So in the past, we have performed epilepsy surgeries uh, since 2012 in University in Malaya. But in fact, the history can go back to 1997, where the first case was performed in uh, UKM. So in UKM, uh, from 1997, our cases in UM were referred to UKM then. And from 2012, we have started our service in UM. Uh, most of the patients only require stage one evaluations, whereby uh, we can assess the patients and decide on surgery based on EEG and MRI brain. Later on, uh, some of them, if we can not come to a concordance conclusion of where the seizure is coming from, some of them require stage two evaluations, whereby we will do subdural uh, implantation, whereby the electrodes was put on the surface of the brain. However, in 2019, actually it's December 2019, we have our first patients who has undergone stereo EEG. Stereo EEG is different from subdural, and you can see on the surface, on the left pictures, is that all the electrodes are inserted through a burr hole on the skull, and it will reach the internal uh, parenchymal uh, area of the brain. And this is very useful. For example, if we have a bilateral hypothesis, where we are not sure whether, let's say, in the left-sided uh, epilepsy, and we are uncertain whether the right-sided may be the epileptogenic zone, then this implantation can cover both left and the right hemisphere. And sometimes the epileptogenic area can be very deep in the insular or cingulate region, and this that electrodes can reach Till the deep uh, structures, which cannot be uh, achieved by subdural electrodes. So this new technology helps us to understand the seizure network in a three-dimensional manner, and that's why it is called stereo. And uh, one of the achievements we have uh, achieved using SEG is that in this particular patient, we have identified the seizure onset in a very confined uh, frontal orbicular regions within one centimeter square. 
So by just doing ablation alone, we have achieved uh, a seizure freedom without performing any further surgery. So SEG are very refined, concise uh, implantations of the brain in understanding where the seizures are coming from. And these are the new uh, updates that we have, we have for Malaysia. 